Mr. Ramaswamy, you pra praised cryptocurrency like Bitcoin as an opt-out from our, quote, broken financial architecture, and you oppose efforts to regulate it. The head of the largest international crypto exchange just pleaded guilty to allowing his platform to launder money for terrorists, including Hamas. <laughs> you say your cryptocurrency plan will, quote, ensure economic freedom for Americans, end quote. Won't it also ensure economic freedom for fraudsters, criminals, and terrorists? Look, fraudsters, criminals, and terrorists have been defrauding people for a long time. Our regulations need to catch up with the current moment. The fact that SBF was able to do what he did at FTX shows that whatever they have as the current framework isn't working. And I think it is nothing short of embarrassing that Gary Gensler, the current leader of the SEC, in front of Congress could not even say whether Ethereum counted as a regulated security or not. And so I think that this is just another example of the administrative state gone too far. Here's the dirty little secret in American politics today. The people who we elect to run the government are not the ones who are even actually running the government. It is the bureaucrats in those three letter agents. Crypto family, welcome back to the channel. Aaron here from the Bitcoin Bros coming back at you with another cryptocurrency video today. And you just saw in that clip, that was Vivek Ramaswamy talking about Bitcoin, talking about how the Fed and Gary Gunzer have been corrupt. This is the first time we've heard Bitcoin come up in a question during a presidential debate. This is a major milestone. Bitcoin cryptocurrency is going mainstream. Some of these politicians are now starting to understand the benefit, the importance of Bitcoin. It's going to be really interesting to see how Bitcoin uh, goes in the, in the future. Is this going to be a bipartisan issue or are just the Republicans going to like Bitcoin? Are the Democrats going to buy in? It's going to be very interesting to see how all that plays out. But anyways, guys, that's huge. I wanted to share that with you. In today's video, we're going to go over some recent Bitcoin and crypto news, look at some on-chain data, and then a little bit of a warning at the end. So make sure to stay tuned for everything we are about to go over here. We can see from Robert Breedlove, he says, What is price? A ratio of exchange between any two assets. Since all assets are priced relatively, an absolute standard is necessary to perfect price discovery. By virtue of its absolute money supply of 21 million, all asset prices will collapse forever when priced in Bitcoin. Completely agree with Robert here. This is what we've seen since the inception of Bitcoin back in 2009. Bitcoin has been the best performing asset. It's been the best performing asset this year. And yes, Bitcoin is still very, very new, so it is very volatile. But everything else is losing value when compared to Bitcoin. And we're going to be checking out some on-chain data charts that show that at the end of the video, so make sure to stay tuned. But something to think about there, guys. And then the option markets are suggesting that Bitcoin will hit $50,000 by January. This also happens to be the same month that the Bitcoin ETF approvals are expected. Open interest for Bitcoin 50K strike calls is massive. And a move to 50K will put Bitcoin up more than 200% from its low. Options are suggesting the run is only just the beginning. Can Bitcoin continue to thrive after this ETF approval? And I want to get your guys' thoughts on this. What do you think is driving the price of Bitcoin? Is it just the long-term hodlers, the believers in Bitcoin? Over 80% of Bitcoin ha hasn't moved in the past year. Is that driving the price? Or is it just basically people front-running the ETF? And do you think after the ETF comes out, do you think the price of Bitcoin will go down? And me personally, guys, I do believe we may have a little bit of a dip when the news comes out. But I think that the ETF overall over the next couple of years is definitely going to help the price of Bitcoin. That's my personal opinion. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. But after this Bitcoin ETF comes out, I think the Ethereum ETF is going to keep that hype going. People are going to try to front run the Ethereum ETF. A lot of people have been saying, hey, we're going to see the Ethereum ETF get approved in June of 2024. I mean, that's not guaranteed, but there will be some people trying to front run this, which means that more money will pour into crypto, into Bitcoin. So that's something to also be paying attention to next year. We could see the Ethereum spot ETF 
from Grayscale and even BlackRock there. So that's something to also pay attention to there. And we did have a CME gap, Bitcoin at $39,000. 28 of the past 30 gaps have been filled. So that is something to take note of. We have this gap currently sitting at around $39,000. So we may see Bitcoin's price come back and fill this CME gap before making higher highs. So we could have a little bit of a retracement. And to be honest, guys, I wouldn't be surprised. Bitcoin has been going up since October. It has just been going up and up and up and really hasn't had too much of any retracements. It's kind of like on this parabolic move to the upside. So a dip back down to 40K, I think would actually be pretty healthy. We test some lower levels. We're still seeing higher highs over the yearly time frame there. So I think that would definitely be healthy to see a little bit of a pullback and see that CME gap get filled there. So that is a price point you might want to be looking out for if you are trading uh, over the next couple of months. And going over some on-chain data here. So this is Bitcoin versus USD and gold in 2023. So you can see the red line here is USD. We obviously know that Bitcoin has outperformed USD this year, up 151%. And against gold, it's up 125 or, or actually 140%. And gold really has not kept up. It's been just a boring rock over the past decade. I mean, gold's price gains have been little to none. If you bought gold back in 2010 or 10 years ago in 2013, you're not seeing any substantial gains. There's a lot of people in the financial space, the traditional financial space that love gold, like Peter Schiff. He loves gold. He understands all the properties of what makes gold uh, have value. But some of these traditional financial people don't see that same value in Bitcoin. They don't see that all the millennials, all the Gen Z are going towards Bitcoin. They're going to be buying that. They're not going to be buying gold. Gold is for the older people, the new generation. We like Bitcoin, we like crypto. So that's why Bitcoin will continue to outperform gold. And it's going to start to eat away at gold because it's the new, better version of gold over the next decade. It's kind of just inevitable, if you ask me. And here's another interesting chart here. This is Bitcoin price performance since the all-time high. It's comparing all the cycles we've gone through. So the black line here is the cycle we're currently at. So we can see it is very, very similar to what we saw back in 2013 20, to 2017 and from 2017 to 2021. We can see it's kind of mirroring what happened. And you can see the point we're at right now, the price did nothing but go up in the past two cycles. So will we see Bitcoin's price go up over the next couple of years? That is definitely a possibility in this cycle. And this is why a lot of people are very excited about the future of Bitcoin, especially over the next couple of years. And then this is the price performance since the cycle low. Here's the black line here. And same thing here. When we see these cycle lows, it has kind of been playing out very similar to what we've seen in the past two runs. So 2015 to 2018 is the blue line. 2018 to 2022 is the green line. You can see the black line here has mirrored both of those. So it's looking like Bitcoin is playing out very similar to the past two hype cycles that we've seen for BTC there. And then I want to leave you guys with this. This is a little bit of a warning. So this is a Bitcoin dev. His name is Luke. He says, PSA, inscriptions are exploding a vulnerability in Bitcoin Core to spam the blockchain. Bitcoin Core has since 2013 allowed users to set a limit on the size of extra data in transactions they relay or mine. By obfuscating their data as a program code, inscriptions bypass this limit. This bug was recently fixed in Bitcoin Knots version 25.1. It took longer than usual due to my workflow being severely disrupted at the end of last year. Bitcoin Core is still vulnerable in the upcoming V26 release. I can only hope it will finally get fixed before V27 next year. So what does this mean? Coming down to this comment here. So if this bug vulnerability is fixed, does it mean ordinals and BRC20 tokens will stop being a thing? And he says, correct. So this is just a warning. If you're invested in ordinals or if you're in BRC20s, they could potentially be going away in the future if they fix this bug. So that's very interesting. But this is why the Bitcoin bros believe you should definitely try to get at least one Bitcoin before any other altcoins, any BRC20. If you want to dabble in any other cryptos, we believe Bitcoin is going to be here to stay. 
everything else is kind of just noise. There's definitely going to be other winners out there in the crypto space, but Bitcoin is definitely going to be here to stay over the next five to 10 years in the Bitcoin bros opinion. But that's all I had for you guys in today's video. Hit that like button if you found any value. Subscribe. We have new Bitcoin, crypto, financial related content coming out every single day. Leave all your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you again for watching all the way to the end of the video. My name is Aaron from the Bitcoin Bros. I'm out. I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a great day.